Hey friend, welcome to my channel Karina Lude where we deep dive and break down the most iconic stars in history. If you're not yet subscribed, please be sure to do so and turn your notifications on so you never miss an upload. Now let's get into this video. Today we are breaking down Meryl Streep who is an icon, one of my favorite actresses of all time. We're going to talk about a lot of things like how a lot of celebrities and actresses and even actors, even from her male counterparts, really don't like her and think she's overrated all of these things I will make an argument why I don't think she's overrated I know she probably has some of her issues like a lot of people think she's arrogant and cocky and uh, we're gonna get into all of that I just think she knows her worth she knows her value and she has perfected her craft and one criticism that I found she got often which I'm like why is that even a criticism from her fellow actresses even Katherine Hepburn was that she takes her job too seriously her brain is always clicking clicking and she's overly obsessed with like memorizing her lines and things like that and I'm like shouldn't you take your job seriously this is why she's the most nominated actress of all time so this is a case for Meryl Streep. Hold your comments before you go all the way in. I don't think her work ethic should ever be a criticism. This is why. Meryl Streep is an American actress who was born Mary Louise, June 22nd, 1949. And the term best actress of her generation is frequently used to describe her, particularly well known for her adaptability to accents. She can take on any accent and do it to perfection and her versatility. Over the course of her career, which has been more than five decades, five decades, decades this is a the longevity that many starlets aspire for she has won numerous awards including a record-breaking 32 golden globe nominations and eight wins out of a record-breaking 21 academy award nominations in addition she has been nominated for a tony award and six grammy awards she has also won two british academy film awards two screen actors guild awards and three primetime emmy awards so yeah i would be pretty obsessed with my work too okay <laughs> Like I said, we will get into more of the scandalous thing, but I do want to get into some of her beauty secrets, her childhood, and just how did Meryl Streep become this decade's most decorated actress of all time. Meryl Streep, the lead of the Devil Wears Prada, doesn't actually use any products on her face. There's not much to her beauty secret. At Meryl Streep's dinner party after filming Iron Lady, Meryl confessed that her one beauty secret is just not touching her face. Along with following these basic rules, Meryl reportedly stays out of the sun and limits the amount of alcohol she drinks to keep her skin glowing and youthful. In an interview with The Talk, Streep said, I don't have a favorite director, just like I don't have a favorite color or I don't have a favorite food. I like everything. So there's nothing to say here. She likes everything. Now, as far as her childhood, she entered the world on June 22nd, 1949 in Summit, New Jersey as Mary Louise Streep. She was born to the artist Mary Wilkinson, Streep and the pharmaceutical businessman Harry Williams Streep Jr. She has two younger brothers who are also in the acting business, Harry William Streep III and Dana David Streep. Her father was of German and Swiss heritage and his family history extended all the way back to Le Fenel, and from which another of her ancestors served as mayor. Her mom's family tree included Brits, Germans, and Irish. Streep comes from pretty good background. Also, one of her ancestors is William Penn. Do you guys know who that is? That's the guy who founded his own whole state, the state of Pennsylvania. Streep's mother firmly encouraged and instilled confidence in her daughter from a young age. And according to Meryl Streep, she was a mentor because she told me, and I quote, Meryl, you're capable. You're amazing. You can do everything you set your mind to. She was saying, you won't get things done if you're lazy, but if you set your mind to it, you can do anything. And I believed her, said Meryl. Although she was more shy than her mother, when she needed a boost of confidence in adulthood, she would seek guidance from her mother. Streep went to Satter Hill Elementary in Oak Street School in Basking Ridge, New Jersey throughout her childhood. She made her acting debut at Louise Heller in the middle school's production of The Family Upstairs. She attended Bernard's High School after moving with her family to Bernardsville, New Jersey in 1963. And according to author Karina Longworth, she was a gawky kid with glasses and frizzy hair who nonetheless enjoyed performing for the camera in early family home movies. Streep began taking opera classes with Estelle Leibling when she was chosen to perform in a school recital when she was just 12 years old. After four years, she decided to to leave her job. Streep attended mass frequently and had many Catholic school mates. But right now, Streep does not assign herself to any religious belief. She participated in the Bernard's High School Mountaineers cheerleading squad. She was a cheerleader and was crowned homecoming queen her senior year. Yeah, 
perfect life, right? <laughs> That's what a lot of people in Hollywood use against her. They say her career has been perfect because of the way her marketing and PR does it. And even her childhood appears so perfect. You were the cheerleader with the most encouraging parents and you are homecoming queen. So there's a lot of animosity from that. And we're going to see later on how that is expressed from her peers. The members of her family all called Old Fort Road home. And even her acting teacher said they didn't really have to teach her anything. She was like self-taught. She just came in. She took her job so seriously that she took learning how to act seriously and didn't really need to be taught. She graduated with honors from the Bachelor of Arts program at Yale and went on to pursue graduate study at the School of Drama, again, adding to the perfect life, right? During her time at Yale, she worked as a waitress, a typist, and in more than a dozen annual stage productions to pay for her education and when she began to experience health problems and developed ulcers as a result of her workload she considered switching to law school she was working herself so hard for her dream she started developing ulcers this is why I feel one of the arguments I can make because I will show you guys throughout the video my points and arguments that she deserves all the accolades she's getting and not overrated because time and time again it has shown that she has dedicated and given her life to her career you know what i'm saying and have made her passion her obsession as far as her career street made her stage debut in 1975 with trelawney of the wells for which she was nominated for a tony award the following year the production of 27 wagons full of cotton and a memory of two mondays were part of the double bill she debuted in julia a 1977 motion picture and in 1978 she received her first oscar nomination for the deer hunter and won her first primetime emmy award for a major role in a miniseries Holocaust. She was recognized for her work as a troubled wife in Kramer vs. Kramer, for which she received the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress, and she later established her career as an actor in the 1980s. She starred as a Holocaust survivor in Sophie's Choice, which earned her the Academy Award for Best Actress, and I want you guys to comment below your favorite Meryl Streep movie. Believe it or not, my favorite movie of Meryl Streep is Death Becomes Her. It was a fabulous movie. Comment below if you've seen that. In the late 1980s and 1990s, she continued to win awards and receive critical acclaim for her work, but her commercial success was uneven. In that time, her two highest grossing films were the drama The Bridges of Madison County and the comedy Death Becomes Her, my favorite. After Streep starred in Mamma Mia, her rendition of the titular song rose to popularity on the Portuguese music charts, where it peaked at number eight in October 2008. At the 35th People's Choice Awards, her version of Mamma Mia won an award for her favorite song from a soundtrack and in 2008 Streep was nominated for a Grammy Award, her fifth nomination for her work on the Mamma Mia soundtrack. Streep initially turned down the role of editor-in-chief Miranda Priestly in A Devil Wears Prada as she said, the money on offer wasn't reflective of my value to the project, end quote. Now according to Oprah Magazine, Meryl Streep and her husband sculptor Don Gummer have been partners since 1978, so a very long marriage. Since then, he has always been by her side at various gatherings to encourage his wife and her artistic aspirations. Their union is the epitome of like relationship goals, okay? However, Streep had another well-known relationship that tragically ended before she was happily married to Gummer. According to the New York Post, Streep and renowned actor John Cazell first became acquainted when they were both cast in The Measure for Measure in Central Park in 1976. The two were equally enamored with one another and their love for one another developed pretty quickly. But sadly, Gazelle was diagnosed with cancer the next year and he passed away in 1978. Together with her husband, Meryl Streep raised three daughters. Her daughters are gorgeous and look just like her and one son who is a musician and her daughters are also into acting which she has expressed some fear for them knowing you know how the industry is and criticism. But okay, when you make it big in Hollywood, there are always other people around you that want a piece of your success, okay? Some of the other actresses in Hollywood are a little peeved that Meryl Streep always seems to get the lead role despite the fact that they are just as talented as she is. So a lot of them are always like, hold on, how I have the same extensive career as her. I start in big office boxes, but why is she like seems to just be so favored? I do understand um, some of the criticism and not all of them are invalid to be fair, right? Viola Davis definitely deserves those checks, the same respect, um, the same accolades. Susan Sarandon. Susan Sarandon was peeved at what she perceived as Hollywood's worship of the Into the Woods starlet. Everything goes to Meryl first, Sarandon says, adding, it's the law. I'm one of those who think Meryl is a great actress. I don't elevate her to the goddess level, but she does get first crack at all the women's roles. If other women had the same shot she had, they could equal her. Sarandon then decided she wanted to make a personal dig too. She said, if her household runs as perfectly as her press would, I'll slash my throat, end quote. Oof, yikes. 
but a lot of people agreed with her behind the scenes just not a lot of people had the guts to speak up but sharon stone definitely had the guts honey tell me how you guys feel about the comments sharon stone is about to make she gave meryl streep this bizarre backhanded compliment oh i don't know speaking to tatler magazine in 2010 she revealed her thoughts on why streep gets so much work in hollywood she said because she looks like a woman we can all relate to stone said i look at her and i think i'm chasing my kids i've moved my parents in with me i'm coping with food spills that looks like me in real life end quote which all sounds fine right it's not too bad of a compliment but then she continues and adds meryl looks like an unmade bed and that's what i look like to me that looks true yikes Yikes, she's basically saying she's average and she looks like the average woman. But then again, I don't see that as a criticism because what's wrong with being average, okay? Most of us are, okay? And we want to see that represented on screen. So even if it was a dig because Sharon Stone did say, hey, you guys misconstrued my words, it was a compliment, it still got her all her accolades. So, and that goes to show and inspire other people that you don't have to look like a Marilyn Monroe or Elizabeth Taylor to get recognition in Hollywood. So either way, you know, and I know it sounds like I'm defending her a lot. It's just, I don't, I, I've never liked mean-spirited criticism. I understand like Viola Davis eloquently stated her criticism of why her checks, you know, should equal the likes of her counterparts without throwing those digs. When you want to make those type of arguments, like Susan Sheridan, at first I was with her. I was with her criticism but then she had to do the dig of oh i'll slit my throat like it was just like okay now this is mean-spirited and it comes off a little bit more jealous okay so you can make your point and advocate for yourself and other women to get equal opportunities without having to throw the low digs do you guys understand or you guys think i'm being too biased i don't know according to carl lagerfeld and he is the creative director and icon of the Chanel brand, and he has his own brands also. Uh, he, he severely was offended by Meryl Streep. So Streep ordered a dress for the Oscars and requested an adjustment be made to the design, which he obliged, okay. However, days later, a phone call came from Streep's spokesperson saying, don't continue to dress. We found somebody who will pay us instead to wear the dress. So Lagerfro told the outlet that the dress was worth about 100,000 euros, which is like 105,000 American dollars. Lagerfeld continued, we give them dresses. We make the dresses, but we don't pay. A genius actress, but cheapness also? No, like, you should pay me to wear your dress. You should, which I agree in most instances if it's a fashion campaign, but on the Oscars, typically you getting dressed by such a high profile, um, you get the free dress. You know what I mean? You don't have to pay for it. You just promote it for us, wear it on the carpet, but you want to get a, a free dress. And then on top of that, pay you to wear it and promote it for us, which just came off entitled him and he was offended. But according to people, as the story kept getting picked up, it forced Chanel to go back and clarify that the starlet never committed to the dress. Streep then issued her statement to people saying, Carl Lagerfeld, a prominent designer defamed me in an important industry publication. That publication printed this defamation unchecked. I do not take this lightly. And Mr. Lagerfeld's generic statements of regret for this controversy was not an apology. He lied. They printed the lie and I'm still waiting, end quote. And I do believe she was kind of like backing them into a corner, in my opinion, because she, she used a lot of legal jargon. If you deal with lawyers and lawsuits often, you understand the jargon when people start to say they defamed me. They printed this unchecked. They flat out lied. They, you know, like things like that. Chanel's not gonna want a lawsuit from Meryl Streep, who is this super powerful people with a lot of powerful people backing her up. Even though Chanel is a powerful brand also, why have this hassle? It would just be bad press. So of course it was backed into a corner to just say, hey, this didn't happen. Cause even if it did happen, when someone starts to accuse you of defamation, now you have to prove that it did happen and maybe there wasn't the proof necessary because it's a phone call he didn't have it recorded probably you know now you have the burden to prove that i did in fact say this as my team did say this and it will be harder for them to prove so even if it did happen we wouldn't really know but comment below do you think it really happened do you think that she really claimed that and just kind of backed them into a corner like hey you're making me sound arrogant and you already know a lot of people already think this of me 
take these, retract these comments. Comment below your thoughts. But the most disturbing beef that she had, there was many others with like Julia Roberts, even George Clooney had a lot to say about her. Listen, the list goes on and on, but I'm not gonna make this video like 50 minutes long of all her critiques. But one of the most disturbing beef, I would say, was with her and Dustin Hoffman, which, ew, ew, Dustin Hoffman, I'll say that. She learned firsthand about Dustin Hoffman's reputation as a method actor in their film, Kramer vs. Kramer. And according to reports, he began by slapping her in the face. And additionally, he made the choice to make fun of Streep's late boyfriend, John Cazell's passing. Meryl, why don't you quit carrying the flag for feminism and simply act the scene, Hoffman retorted, as Streep attempted to restructure a scene. But unsurprisingly, after filming was through, the two parted ways. When asked about it, she revealed, this is tricky because when you're an actor, you're in a scene, you have to feel free. This was my first movie and it was my first take in my first movie and he slapped me. It was overstepping. He could just slap her like that and call it improvising because he was in the moment. Sir, do you hit women in real life? Because why would that be so easy, you know, to just do? But that was so disrespectful. I, I couldn't imagine being slapped by a grown man. So Rose McGowan, who accused Weinstein of, you know, you know, you know, tweeted her anger at plans for stars to wear black to the Golden Globes in a silent protest against sensual abuse of actresses like Meryl Streep. She said, your silence is the problem. McGowan's tweet in full said, actresses like Meryl Streep who happily work for the pig monster are wearing black at Golden Globes in a silent protest. Your silence is the problem. You'll accept a fake award breathlessly and affect no real change. I despise your hypocrisy. In Streep's statement given to the Huffington Post, the Oscar winner said she was hurt to be attacked by McGowan and said she didn't know about Weinstein's alleged, you know. She said, I have never in my life been invited to his hotel room. Streep added, he needed me much more than I needed him and he made sure I didn't know. Rose assumed and broadcast something untrue about me and I wanted to let her know the truth. She wrote adding that she had passed on her phone number to McGowan through friends after seeing the tweet. I sat by the phone all day, she wrote adding, I hope that she would give me a hearing. She did not, but I hope she reads it. Streep worked with Harvey on such films as The Iron Lady and jokingly referred to him as God. So I don't know, I do hate when scandals pop out about people and then we start to attack everyone else that ever had a picture with them. It means nothing. It really, really means nothing. People change and people the industry is fake so you might see like even Trump and Clinton they had pictures together right the kids used to have play dates stuff like that if you go look but the industry is so fake it could have just been a networking thing especially in certain circles I always tell you guys the higher up you go these circles are really fake with networking not everybody like each other a lot of things is just photo ops a lot of things is just linking up a lot of things is just hey you know you have this ranch that I want to vacation on so um, and then I have this mansion that you want to come vacation in on on, on the port or whatever so let's you know meet up talk be friends so that we can swap houses every now and then for vacation when I'm here and I'm you know stuff like that or maybe you know the headmistress of this college or this school that I want my child to get in so I don't really like you like that you're not my favorite person but hey let's be buddy buddy so that maybe you can put a word into this person's ear for me in the industry and in even regular average life a lot of things are fake and so I wouldn't um, necessarily see a person having close pictures with someone as oh they're besties because we even know with Elizabeth Taylor a lot of her friendships I'm gonna do a re another breakdown for most of these starlets I have to because the situation that happened with my channel there's a lot of videos I have to do over and Marilyn and stuff but a lot of their friendships were even faked okay the studio heads made them friends with certain people for publicity and even relationships were fake marriages were fake they would even have go as far as have kids with people they didn't really love just because it made so much money that they're like oh well I have my affairs behind the scenes I have my little boyfriends but we'll have kids have our image never divorce be my beard be this whatever there's it's fake <laughs> so it is quite possible that she didn't know it. and I'm sure Harvey was not broadcasting what he was doing me personally though that could be a possibility personally I won't believe that she didn't know because no I just won't believe it <laughs> I won't believe that like powerful people like Oprah and all of them like y'all y'all were around you know yeah come on I'm not gonna believe it but to be fair it's a possibility but this is all I have for this video comment below your thoughts what do you think and who else would you guys like me to do a video breakdown of next yes, I love you guys so much thank you for tuning in if you like the music you're listening to in the background the link is in the description support my brother's music like comment subscribe and share with a friend until next time